Hey, what's going on? Welcome back. Brad Tragic here. Um, first of all, I want to, uh, well, I don't know if I want to thank all the subscribers. Hey, y'all, welcome all the subscribers. That's what I'll do. I should thank you. you got drops for them for the most part. But, um, the subscribers that uh, are not from growsocials.com, I would like you to continue watching. And people who came from GoSocials.com, um, I want to thank you, and hopefully you'll uh, like this uh, little web series uh, from Brad Judge of the channel. Uh, hope you like it. This is the wrestling show. Uh, so if you're a fan of pro wrestling, uh, stay tuned. Um, didn't get to do a review this whole week, and tomorrow is another Raw. So this is for last week. I... I actually did a review, I went to upload it, uh, I was going to have this, put a logo with it, just to try it out, random cat in the background, um, but it was taking forever, I was even trying to, um, I was trying to do something to the uh, file on the computer and it was taking forever, and then I tried to upload to YouTube and it was like, <laughs> I mean, it was like, I was getting ready to head to bed, and, you know, it was, it was only like at 5, 10%, so I was like, oh, I can't wait this long. I'm like, I'm just going to have to cut it, you know, I'm just going to have to wait until I'm able to upload, uh, figure out a way to do this faster, I don't know, something's going to, I don't know, I don't know what's going on. I didn't figure out a way. Um, so here we go. Uh, last week on Raw was a really, really good Raw. It was a test run of their three-hour show, um. If this is how we're going to be when they go three hours, um, I can I can hope that it'll be this way. Um, Vince McMahon was there. He had a lot of segments, a lot of funny segments. Um, I did like that. I don't like that. And, you know, when do we ever get that? It's always all seriousness. That's, that's the thing about the WWE, you know. Um, it's all fun and all fun and games when Vince McMahon's there, but when he goes away and this is Johnny there, you know, it's it's there's no fun there. There there's no you know, there's nothing like, you know nothing like that when, you know, there's Santino Morello and that's it. You know, you know, we get, you know, Burns Clay who does a little funny dancing and stuff, but that's about it. He don't really do much other comedic relief. Uh but yeah. It's like, uh, that's something we miss, I think. Something from the Attitude Era where we had the goofy gimmicks and things like that. You know, along with, you know, Stone Cold and Rock and Triple H and Taker and all those other gimmicks. Uh, but, you know, I think that's something we miss. So it was nice to see that again, you know. I mean, the best was when he was dancing with the, uh, uh, what was it called? The Funkadactyls or whatever. It was pretty awesome. Um, then, uh, you know, we see, we got, we got kind of a surprise in that Del Rio was uh, basically knocked out of No Way Out pay-per-view. Um, so tonight is No Way Out, and Del Rio did not, was not able to compete because he got something to do with getting, uh, being knocked unconscious by a uh, great colleague and doctors would not clear him to wrestle. Um, kind of wonder what's going on with that. I don't know, That's that sounds like... It almost sounds like something that would happen back in the day when uh, somebody was getting ready to jump ship or something, but, you know, that ain't going to happen, probably. Um, it'd be funny, but it wouldn't, I don't think it would happen. Um, it sounds like something back in WCW day, and then Lex Luger shows up on Nitro the next week. Whoa, oh, Lord! Um, for the very next day, yeah. Um, so we got a surprise in a Fatal 4-Way, and as soon as they announced it, I'm like, oh... There's only one man, and I hope he wins. And lo and behold, he did win. Um, so Ziggler, Dolph Ziggler, will be facing Sheamus. I'm, it's almost like, it's like, who are you going to believe, you know? Are they really going to make the IC champion huh, take on Sheamus? And that was the only other option that I think a lot of people thought might happen, uh, you know. But, I mean, who would ever think, you know, Jack Swagger and Great Khali were going to get a shot at, you know, Sheamus' belt? You know, 
It's like the only legit, legitimate people to get a shot is you know give your IC person a shot to belt. You know they're not gonna win it. They will never do anything like that nowadays. Um, or you know give Dolph Ziggler a shot. Uh, cause you know he's over. You know he's over. Uh, so yeah, I think a lot of people were pulling for Dolph Ziggler. Uh, he won. There you go. He's gonna get a shot tonight. I. From a business standpoint, they probably won't go with Dolph Ziggler, but it would be nice. Uh, it would be, uh, I think it would get the fans involved a lot more if they would give the belt to, to Ziggler. Um, you know, triple threat match. Um, I actually... I'm actually predicting a title change for the WWE title. I don't know about the world title. I think they're they got they're shoved up Sheamus's ass, and I don't really think that they're gonna uh, get the belt off of Sheamus. But I do. I am predicting a title change on the uh, Triple Threat match because they're putting a lot of emphasis on AJ. Now, see, here's my dilemma: Kane's run. Has got to be coming to an end. If he if it's not coming to an end, then they got to get something fresh for him. So that's a dilemma I'm having. Is that I think that they're going to give him the belt, and they're going to give him an opportunity to be that world heavyweight champion and that big heel that they don't have. Um, they haven't had in a while. So I'm kind of thinking they might give Kane the belt. The, on the other flip side. Of them needing a heel as a champion, and I think that it would work. It was something that would be fresh for the WWE. I mean, the only other heel that has been big in the WWE has been Triple H. Um, but that being said, this AJ thing is making me think that it's something that's going to come out of nowhere, and it's been Daniel Bryan all along pulling the strings for a uh, little AJ. So. That's what I'm kind of thinking, and uh, if that comes out to be true, it'll be one of the best storylines they've had in a while. Um, now, if they were to do this the correct way, it would go on. If it was, if that was the storyline that was going on, the best way to do that is would have Punk retain at No Way Out, and then at SummerSlam, the whole screw job unravels. Um, but. Knowing that they'll they'll pull the trigger before, you know, it's gonna be the best way to get over. So, you know, but I, I do see Tane O'Brien winning the championship at some point, um, and they're already put keep putting him in the, the fray with CM Punk, and they're having great like altercations and things, and I think the fans are enjoying it. They they want to see it. So, you know, who knows? I honestly think they're probably gonna have Punk and Brian feud for the most of the year. Um, on and off. I mean, they'll probably end, end this either at No Way Out or at SummerSlam in some sort of match, uh, either between the three of them or between the two of them. And, you know, we'll see. Hopefully, Brian will win the belt or uh, something like that. But I, I think a lot of people are going to be shocked. I think WWE is going to try and throw some wrenches in. And I think Brian, may, Brian or Kane might walk out with the championship tonight. Uh, that's what I think. But who knows, we could get the stale old stuff and Punk could walk out with the championship. I think it's, you know, I just think Punk needs a vacation because he's been champion for a while. Uh, maybe give him some time off, say he's injured or something, give him a couple months off, have him come back. Uh, you know, either heel or babyface, you know. I, I mean, he's big. He's he's a main eventer now. They've already done it. So uh, they, uh, they can't go back on their uh, work, you know, like before when you won the world championship. You know, it was kind of a stagnant title reigns he had before that. Because I think that he's a three-time champion up late now. Um, if I could be wrong, but I'm pretty sure. Cat tried to chime in on the comment on that. Um, but I could be wrong, but I'm pretty sure he's a three-time World Heavyweight Champion. But the other two reigns were pretty stagnant. He didn't really get much steam with them because the, they didn't really help him with, you know, like, storylines and things like that. They didn't really help him very much. Uh, they kind of lacked in that, in that uh, way the last time he had the belts. Um, which this time it is a WWE Championship, so, uh, I think this is the first time he's had this belt, so, 
but he's a two-time world heavyweight champion, I believe. I think those are, that's the belts that's the belt he had before this. So uh, there you go. Um, yeah. Um, we had some other good matches uh, on the on the card. Um, so a lot of people were giving crap to uh, Ricardo and Beth Phoenix taking on uh, uh, the Glam, uh, Amazon, Beth. Or, oh my God. Layla and Santino Marilla. I actually thought it was a pretty entertaining match because you didn't know what you were going to get. Uh, it was kind of awkward. You know, it was like, they put these together. And, and uh, I think we're going to see a lot more of Ricardo and Beth Phoenix. I think they should do that. If you think about it, it would be awesome. It would kind of start to build a little faction, uh, or at least a little group between uh, Beth Phoenix and uh, Del Rio. It would be kind of cool, something different, you know. Um, so hopefully they do something with that and leave Ricardo with Beth Phoenix and then when uh, Del Rio I mean he's not really out injured injured but um, when he decides to come back onto the scene whatever's going on because I see something that's going on behind the scenes um, you know he'll they'll be together and if not then hopefully Ricardo gets stuck with Beth Phoenix and they do something with that because Ricardo's got a lot of talent, you know, and I think, you know, if, you know, if Beth Phoenix don't want him, she don't need him, and, you know, they can give him to somebody else to uh, be a manager for. Uh, you know, I could see somebody like a, you know, I know he's already got a manager, but I could see somebody like a Jack Swagger would be really good with Ricardo, you know, him saying how great a wrestler he is and all this stuff. I'm just saying that Ricardo would say that. I'm not saying I would say that, but we're saying Ricardo would say that, you know, to get the fans, you know, in a no boo. Um, but yeah, I thought it was a pretty interesting match, you know, Ricardo at the end, he's like, yeah, won, somehow we won, yay, and then he's like tearing off his shirt, and there's like a Justin Bieber shirt underneath, so I thought it was pretty hilarious. Um, then we see, uh, later on the night, we get to see, uh, Ryback, which I, I like that they're putting Ryback overall. This was, I, I didn't understand why they didn't do this, like, after, you know, like, I guess they're waiting to see what the reaction was going to be. The reaction is pretty good for Ryback, so I think that's why they're putting him on Raw now. I mean, that's tremendous, you know, but you know, after, after you see him beat two guys and do that double dump thing, uh, it's not going to be that impressive much anymore, so they're going to have to start putting him in the ring with some real wrestlers and uh, have him do some squash matches. Uh, and, and to be quite honest, I would actually, you know, have him start fighting some of the people, you know, the, you know, from like NXT, have him come on the show and things like that, and have right back squash him, you know. Because I mean, if you think about it, you know, this guy is going to be the next, you know, unstoppable force in the WWE, you know. Um, so to have him start doing that, you know, he can't be beat. He can't be beat. He can't be beat. You know. Um, I'm just waiting to see where they're going to go with this. If they're going to actually, you know do like a whole Goldberg thing and you know his first shot really against somebody that means anything you know is going to be uh you know I mean Goldberg started to face a little of some known people like there at the end and then he faced you know uh uh Raven and he won I think the uh U.S. belt but he still had the U.S. belt at one point and uh I think they had to uh, put up the belt. I think that's what happened to WCW. I don't know. Can you guys remember what happened? When Goldberg won the world championship, what happened? Because I'm pretty sure he still had both belts. He didn't get beat for a while. Um, turn down below. Um, I don't think he lost the U.S. belt for a while. I don't think he lost the U.S. belt. I think he, they had to take it from him because he won the world championship. Um, because, I, mean, I, I just remember that day. I'll, I'll have to do a video on that. Um, so yeah, Ryback, incredible. I, I'm, I'm happy to see this guy on Raw again. I hope they keep putting him on Raw. You know, like the player. I ain't got really much choice. Sorry. <laughs> uh, then we get a nice surprise because of the three-hour show and because a thousand episodes are flashing back and showing a lot of things. And this week they had, uh, along with having a flashback, so things like that, they had a former main eventer, and I was like, who are they going to get? I was like, who? 
I kept thinking Goldberg and Goldberg and Goldberg was going to show up because it's been in our heads lately because of Slammiversary and his whole Ryback gimmick. Um, I think it's a letdown. They didn't show up at Slammiversary and now he didn't show up on Raw. So it's like uh, people will start to give up on it now. <laughs> um, but, you know, uh, so we get Vader and, uh, you know, I'm going to have to be the one to disagree on this because a lot of people were saying, oh, he looked great. He looked okay. He didn't look great. He looked okay. He looked like an old wrestler should. You know, he's out there. He looked banged up. He you know, he fought. He did what he could do. But, you know, and I, I knew he wouldn't do the Vader song because he's getting old. He's getting up there. Um, but, you know, he, uh, you can tell he was kind of getting up there. Uh in this way, and some of the moves, uh, I was kind of hoping he didn't injure, uh, I think it's Kurt Hawkins he faced, I think that's who he faced, Kurt Hawkins, um, so, uh, I think he's still here, I don't know, I get confused, I get he's still here and Kurt Hawkins mixed up, um, anyway, he faced some jobber, or a, uh, we put, a, a superimposed jobber, there you go, I don't know who, you know, Mm -hmm. But uh, yeah, Vader squashed him. It was awesome. He did the Vader bomb thing. Boom. Uh, yeah, pretty cool. Uh, I liked it. And that and that leads me to another thing. I was watching the Impact the other day, and I realized something about Impact, and I realized something about WWE. Now, one of the issues we have <coughs> with TNA, which this is a kind of a TNA point, right? Right in the middle of my raw review. Um, <clears throat> are complaining about WWE is they never build those storylines. Most of the matches they have on their card is just like throw them together. And everything, you know, most of the time there's only like a few matches, you know, and a couple promos that further storylines. And that's it. Now in thinking about this, I wanted to point this out because I think this will help solve our issue of what's wrong with TNA. And I, I kinda thought about it. And I think the reason why TNA suffers is because every match has to mean something. They can't have a throwaway match. It's That's what it seems like to me. If they do, it's between Donkey Boy and John Sr. over here. And no one gives a fuck. So, that's what I think is wrong with TNA is because... They always want their matches to mean something. And what I mean by it has to further a story by it. has to be for a belt or a shot of the belt. It has to be for something. There can't just be uh, nothing and they just wrestle. That, you know, can't be. You know, that, uh, that just, you know, can't just go out there and wrestle. So, there's my little tidbit. So, uh, think on that. And next time you watch Impact next week, think about what I said. Because, uh, it, I think it's damn true. I think it's really damn true. So, the rest of Raw, it, it, was, it was awesome. You know, it was pretty good. Uh, you know, we got the main event between, uh, uh HA and CM Punk versus Kane and Dana Bryan. And we get the weird, uh, thing in the middle. If you watched it, you know what I talk about. AJ was making out with Kane in the middle of the ring. With Kane just, well, basically just standing there. But it's pretty hot. I admit, it's pretty hot. Not him making out with Kane, but AJ's looking hot lately. I'm sorry. Uh, is it just me, or did she not look hot when she was with Daniel Bryan, and now she's with CM Punk? She looks hotter than hell. I don't know why. I just don't understand. I think it's just the craziness of it and the way they're putting a lot of emphasis on her now. Um... But Kane, a little weird thing right there. I don't know. I see a twist coming in No Way Out. That's all I'm going to say. I, something is going to happen in No Way Out tonight. I think something is going to happen. And something is going to be, and we're all going to be like, what the hell? Either AJ's going to be with Kane, AJ's going to be with Daniels. Brian Daniels. Why didn't they, why didn't they do that? That's a stupid Daniel Bryan. <clears throat> But, um, we get that match, that match. It was kind of 
know, it's kind of weird. <clears throat> but AJ got him to win. Because after that, Kane walked out and was like confused. He was like, uh huh, uh huh. And uh, she tagged him punk and he beat Daniel Bryan. So, uh, and I liked that towards AJ just sitting in the middle ring. Indian style and like cock their head, looking all crazy like it was awesome. This storyline is you know one of the best in a while. I have to admit it's one of the best. I don't know where they're going with it. It looks like a train going off the tracks, but I don't know where they're going with it. But it it looks pretty good. It looks like a pretty good storyline. Uh, who knows? Kind of like the Ziggler uh, Jack Swagger uh, Vicky Guerrero angle. That train's been running for a while now. When the hell it's going to get back on the track, I have no idea. Hopefully Ziggler is the belt, gives Jack Swagger a shot, and ends the damn whole thing. And he goes off on his damn own. Kick Vicky Grow with a poontang and walk off. Gee, man, Christmas. We're waiting on this damn breakup for frick of the year or something. <clears throat> so, uh... Huh. Yeah. At the end of Raw, we get to see Vince McMahon in the ring getting ready to fire John Laurinaitis, and you knew it wasn't going to happen, folks. If you even thought for one chance that Johnny Ace, I mean John Laurinaitis, whoops, uh, uh, would be getting fired, you're stupid because they're not going to do it. He has so much heat right now. He is so many people hate him. He's like the best heel uh, for a GM. I'm not going to say he's the best GM, but I like to tune in to watch him stutter on TV. Uh, it's just funny. It's hilarious to see him stutter in front of a national audience and uh, things like that. Uh, it's, just odd. it's just awesome the way he just presents himself in the ring. And, uh, he, uh, I think he gets too excited. And he like stutters and he gets the words wrong, mixes it up. <laughs> Man, I, I was like, come on, Vince, say it, say it. He didn't say a damn word in this raw. And I am I was a slap Vince for saying that because or a slap Vince for not saying anything because John Ryan said hundreds episode and then he fixes himself and says a thousand. And I'm waiting on oh, Vince, come on buddy, say it, say it. Do you even know what episode we're on or something something snappy, you know, to, you know and nothing. Drop the ball, Vince. That would have had everybody rolling. Rolling in the uh YWC, I think, uh Nothing. Nothing, Vince. You let this hang in there. You let this hang in there, man. You had an opportunity to bash Vince and make, or bash Johnny, and it would have been super hilarious. Um, but basically, this whole schnoz, John Cena comes down, or Big Show comes down, saying, oh, oh, I'm sorry, but you can't fire me. I know you can if you want to, but you have to pay me while I'm sitting home on my ass. Um, and, uh, then John Cena comes down and he's saying, oh, blah, 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 blah. Same shit we've been hearing for the past two weeks from these guys. I'm I'm over it. I don't, I hope to God they don't drag this story around on SummerSlam because it'll be the worst thing ever. Um, I think we're going to be stuck with it till SummerSlam, though. Um, but the Big Show loses the match at No Way Out. John Cena win, of course. I was kind of, why didn't say that? But uh, Johnny, our main man, will be fired. Like I just said, when do you think he'll get fired? This is the whole running gag. Like, uh, so the whole running gag is that everybody thinks Johnny's going to get fired. And that's the whole thing. It's like, that's what's so entertaining about it. It's like, you know he's not going to get fired. You know. You know he's not going to get fired. So, now, why would you buy the pay-per-view? Why? But then again... You don't know if he's not going to get fired. So it, that's what kind of makes people, I think they're trying to get people to buy the pay-per-view to see if Johnny's going to get fired. Um, but, you know, it's like the more they do it, I mean, this is, I think, believe, correct me if I'm wrong, but the third time they've done this, uh, and plus if you've got WrestleMania, uh, you know, after a while, it's going to get stale, so... 
Who knows? He may. He may go by by and Triple H might come in uh, next Monday, so. Who knows? Speaking of Triple H, he hasn't been anywhere because they're trying to get a pay-per-view buy out of it. Oh, yes, the reason why I'm going to buy No Way Out is to hear Triple H get in the middle of the ring for 20 minutes and talk. Yeah. But I will predict something. I bet Lesnar and I bet Heyman will be there. And if they're not, then... Okay. At least Heyman will be there, probably. And come in the ring and say something to him. If not, they'll be on Raw to talk about it. Uh, so that's it. Uh, well, uh, trying to go too long, 25 minutes. Like I said, the video the review I had before, I was in the pitch black car. Doing a review, gonna upload it with the little logo in the back. I talked about my ugly face. You didn't want to see this. I look like a lion now. Roar. Anyway, um, but yeah, I had I had the review ready to upload. Taking forever, so I wasn't gonna wait here, and it was already like three o'clock in the morning. When I was doing it, so uh, yeah. Uh, thank you for watching. Hope you watch again. You're a newbie. Never seen B Rad Tragic. Brad Tragic. Uh, keep watching. Got a lot of other ones, and I'm probably going to upload another one here in a second. So, since I haven't done it for a long time, I'm slacking lately. Slap me hard, mama. Bam. Um, anyway, keep on rocking. This is Brad Tragic.